Hey everyone, in this video I'll be sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years working with Cisco IP phones. Here are some of the things that I'll be talking about in this video such as getting screenshots of the phone through a web browser, how to enable the debugs on the phone using call manager, generating PRTs, where you can generate the PRTs from, getting the phone's configuration file, stuff like that. The first thing that I'll talk about is getting the phone's screenshot. In order to get the phone's screenshot, you have to go and browse to the phone's web interface, which means that web access needs to be enabled on the phone. And what you put in is the phone's IP address or resolvable name, which likely you don't have resolvable names for your phones, so you'll put in the phone's IP address. And over here on this monitor, you can see that the URL for the screenshot is slash CGI slash screenshot. And that will allow you to see whatever's on the phone's screen at that time. So if the user's here on this, uh, you know, the phone is idle, there's nothing going on, then you would see, you know, whatever lines are on the phone, the date, the time, etc. If the pho if the user were to hit um, the settings access or anything, you would see that on the screen. If they were to hit redial, new call, anything that's on the screen, you would see that here. Next, I'll go into how to make a phone's console cable. In order to do that, you could go to this link here, and this link would walk us through how to make the phone's configuration file. As you can see here, this auxiliary port actually will function as the console port as well. And you can see what um, wires are going to be needed. We don't need all that are typical in the console cable that you would get with a Cisco switch or router. Uh, we only need the red, orange, and green. And this uh, document will actually go through saying, you know, how long you want to cut things down. And also, you'll need to change the, uh, the baud rate, flow control, things like that. And in the end, you plug your cable in, and you can actually see what's printing to the console. This is important because if you have an issue that you're troubleshooting where the phones are losing network connectivity, and you need to get logging throughout that whole time, you can't SSH into the phone. You can console into the phone, that would, that would make it a lot easier. Or if the phone is losing power and completely rebooting, this is also helpful then. The next topic I'll discuss is how to actually get the phone's certificate if they have one installed, which technically they all have one installed because it would have the uh, manufacturer installed certificate. And as you can see here in this screenshot, um, what you would do is browse to the phone's IP address. Uh, you can go to any URL you want to, just make it HTTPS. And then you can click on this piece over here and take a look at the certificate. And as you can see, I brought the certificate up here and I clicked on view certificate. When we look at the issuer of the certificate, we can see that it says uh, Cisco Manufacturing CA. That lets us know that this is the manufacturing installed certificate. If this were the LSC, we'd see um, that it was issued by the CAPAF. Times when it's useful to get this certificate is if you do phone VPN using uh, the installed certificate for um, validating instead of using username and password, or if you're doing 802.1x, that's another time that we would need to get the certificate to download it. Um, I'm sure there's some other moments when you might need it, but those are the two times that I need it the most. The next topic I'll discuss is how to get the phone's configuration file. This is useful when troubleshooting because you need to see exactly what the phone is receiving, not what's configured on the call manager. You want to see exactly what's being sent to the phone. Sometimes the, the uh, configuration file can become corrupt, and if you download it, you might be able to find specifically which area is corrupted. And um, there's three different ways that I typically go about downloading the config file. The, I can pull it out of a, ca a packet capture. I can get it from a web browser, like how we see over here on this screen. Or I can download the PRT, generate and download the PRT on the phone. This link here talks about um, two ways that you can download the, p the phone's configuration file, one from the web browser, and it shows you here how to get it from a packet capture where you do follow TCP stream 
and you'd be able to see the config file right here, how it looks. The next topic is how to enable debugs on the phone from CUCM. So in order to do that, there's a new thing called the log profile on the phone's web page, the phone's configuration page in CUCM. These are the different uh, presets that are available that you can select over here. You can hit control or shift and select multiple at a time. Um, it's not exactly recommended to do too many at a time because you could impact the phone's performance if you turn up all of the logging. So just make sure that you find whichever one is most suitable for whatever scenario you're looking into and um, use, use that preset. The next topic that I'll discuss is how to actually collect the phone's logs. So here we can see that on the phone's information page in settings, um, and by that I mean if, if somebody at the phone hits the settings and then goes to phone information, you can select the option to report a problem, and then you can go through and actually generate the PRT. Another way is that on the phone's web page, if, you go, if, if the software version on the phone is high enough, you can go to the uh, section on the phone's web page called console logs, and um, you'll be able to actually click a button there to generate the PRT. And the last option, which I think is probably the most convenient, is that on call manager, you can select whatever phones support the PRT, and then you can generate the PRT for whatever um, phones are selected. Also, this document here talks about the first method where you go into the phone settings. Right here, you hit the gear, icon, gear icon and you do phone information and report a problem. And this document's pretty well written, pretty clear, mostly um, pictures to show you how to do it. The last topic that I'm going to discuss is how to show all of the phones inside the uh, CCM GUI. And the way that you do that is um, by default, it will show that there are 25, um, it's, di it's displaying 25 entries when you click find on the phones. If you change that to any value, 50, 100, whatever, you'll see the URL will change. And then within this URL, you'll see that it says rows per page. I changed it to 800. That's well above, I think the, the max that's set is 250. I changed it to 800 so I could get all the phones in one page. And then I can select all of the results on that page and copy it out and put it into some sort of text editor, whether it be Notepad++ or whatever. And then I can um, do a search for unregistered or whatever particular thing that I want to find. And I can take that text and put it into its own file and have a whole list of all the unregistered phones or you know, whatever it is that you want to search on. So now that I've, I've shown that these tips and tricks exist, I'm going to go ahead and walk through some of them to um, actually let people see how it's done because just getting the phone screenshot, it sounds crazy easy, but there are some things that you have to do before you can browse to that URL because you have to authenticate. And then on top of that, there's a number of issues that can come up. So I'll put in the, in the uh, comments of this video um, some of the error messages that you would receive going to that URL and how to troubleshoot them or, you know, what those error messages mean. The first thing that we discussed in the presentation was how to do the screenshot of the phone. So you need to make sure that the web access is enabled. Um, for these phones, the web access is not enabled here on the phone's config page, as you can see here. But where it is enabled is on the uh, common phone profile. If we were to look here for the same search web, you can see it's enabled there. Um, so here we go to the web access and I will change this to screenshot. Now, the important thing here is uh, let me let me clear out my history Go to options. Privacy clear history for the last hour clear now All right so now we'll try this again and as you can see here I'm being prompted for um, some credentials so I have that set up to be uh, just a user and you can see that I was able to authenticate now if we go back to the call manager and we go to end user you'll see that I only have one end user here 
and that user has the um, phone that I'm browsing to it as a controlled device. That is the requirement that um, you can have multiple different users that are uh, that have this device listed as a controlled device. So you don't have to worry about um, that the user is associated with a particular end user. Usually what I do is um, I'll go in and I'll associate an administrator, like I'll have a, um, an end user on the cluster that is just a test end user and I'll associate the phone with that test end user. So that way I know the pin, I know the password, I don't have to bother the end user for their pin or password. And then what I can do, I have this phone right here, is I can tell an end user, I'll say, okay, do you see a gear icon on your phone? Um, and I'll walk them through finding that. And then once they press it, I'll refresh the page. And then if I need them to go into phone information or go into the admin settings or whatever, I'll tell them, you know, hey, press six to select admin settings. And then I'll say, you know, I want to see the status messages, uh, for example. I'll say press three for status and press one for status messages. And then here on the phone, I can see the status messages rather than asking the um, end user to tell me what they're seeing on the phone. The next topic that I talked about in the presentation is how to make the phone's console cable. That would um, take a pretty long amount of time to, to walk through that here in the video. So the document is really good, very clear. And if you follow the document, it's got enough details that you'll be able to make the console cable. The uh, main thing, the two main things to note is that you want to make sure the phone has an, auxil an auxiliary port. And also you want to make sure that you get an, an RJ11 uh, cap to put on your cable. This is RJ45. You want RJ11 because this uh, port is an RJ11 port, whereas these two are RJ45. The next topic that was discussed is how to get the phone's um, certificate, whether it be an LSC or an MIC. And so what you do is go to HTTPS colon slash slash and then the IP address of the phone and you accept these. Then you can click here and go to connection, more information. And here I can view the certificate and I can see that it was signed by the Cisco manufacturing CA SHA-2 which lets me know that this is the MIC, not the, L not the LSC. If it was the LSC, it would be signed by the CAPF. And in details, we can go to export and download the uh, certificate and actually have the file local on our machine. The other topic that was discussed is how to get the phone's configuration file from the CUCM. Um, I'm not really going to go too deep into that because the document here does show how to do it from the web browser and it's very clear again just like the uh, phone console cable and how to get it from the packet capture but what this document doesn't cover is how to get it from the PRT so later on when I talk about how to get how to generate and download a PRT I will talk about how to um, actually find the config file in the PRT that I download Next on the list is how to enable the phone's debugs from the CUCM uh, phone configuration page that we're on here. The default is preset. So I went into the phone and I enabled these debug or I did a show debug to see what's enabled by default. And we have the list here. Now, um, even though I said don't ever enable all the debugs on the phone at once because it can affect the phone's performance. Um, I'm working in a lab environment, so I'm going to go ahead and enable all the debugs. I just went ahead and hit shift and then press the down arrow all the way to the bottom. And I'll save this here. All right, it didn't like that. Let's go try that again. Hmm. Let me refresh the page. All right, let's do it again. And I'll hit save. Then we'll hit apply config to update the phone's configuration file on the TFTP server. And 
I'll reset the phone so that it will request its configuration file and we'll see if it applies the um, updated debugs once it's registered again. So I'll pause the video while I wait for that to register. The phone is registered again. So now I'll go back into the CLI and we'll do show debug. And as we can see already, there's definitely more debugs enabled. I would have expected um, with everything that we turned on, I would have expected a lot more than uh, what I see here. Let's see. Yeah, they're in a different order, so it's not going to uh, highlight. But I mean, it's very clear that there's more debugs enabled now than what were uh, with the default settings. Moving on to how to collect the phone's console logs. Um, the, the presentation, I showed two ways to do it. One was from the phone's uh, actual like being at the phone and going to phone information and selecting report a problem. The other way is that if you're on a high enough version of call manager, you can actually in the call manager GUI generate the uh, PRT and download it. And the way that I didn't show in the presentation, but I had talked about it is that if you go here, if you're on a high enough version, I'm on 1261. If you're on a high enough version, you can go to the console logs, uh, web, uh, web page on the phone's GUI and you can click on report problem. And then here, it's going to be collecting and you can see that it's um, actually refreshing the page periodically waiting for the PRT to be um, done. Uploading failed, that's that's not a problem. If you go read the PRT document that I talked about in the uh, video earlier, you'll see that you have to set up a, a, a remote server. But the reason why it's not a problem that the PRT didn't uh, upload is that you just scroll down here and you can download it to your local machine. So now we'll open the containing folder. And I want to extract it. But I don't have any of my tools for extracting the file. Let's see, is that thing still downloading? All right, so I'll pause the recording for a moment while I download uh, 7-Zip or something to extract it, and then we'll, we'll go on from there. I now have 7-Zip installed, so I'll go about extracting this file. And like I had said in the video earlier, I will show how to find the uh, phone's configuration file in here. It's this file right here, the one that says .cnf. And we can open that up in Notepad++ and you can see all the different settings in here, including um, the call manager group here. And we can see that there's only one call manager in the call manager group, which is fine because that's the way I have it configured. And um, yeah, that's how you go about generating the PRT from the phone's web interface and how to download it as well. And the last topic that I covered in the presentation is how to show all of the phones in the uh, CUCM's web interface. So what you do is go over here and change this to um, some value that would modify the URL up here. So you see right here where it says 150, you can set that to be 800 if you have, say, 799 phones or even 800 phones. And then all of the phones would display here and you could copy that out and put it into Notepad++ or whatever text editor you want and you can manipulate the output there. And that's the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching and um, if you like the content, please let me know. Click a thumbs up, uh, comment down below. Let me know if you have any problems trying to do the things that I showed here in the video. And uh, also please go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content down the road.